When you solve for an equation, again we have equations here, not just expressions, but equations because we have equal signs. What you're trying to do is to figure out what number can I put in for x so that this side of the equation is the same thing as this side. In other words, what value can I plug in for x so that I actually get 35? Now, to make your life easier, one thing you should always do is combine like terms. In other words, combine stuff that can be combined. 3x's plus 4x's are 7x's. So if you, this is a like term to this because it's x times some number. This is also x times some number. Now, we can rewrite the equation. Always rewrite the whole thing. Now you have 7x equals 35. What does that mean? This means 7 times something is 35. You might know the answer right away, which is 5. So in this case, x is 5. But how do we get to this answer? Is there some kind of strategy? Well, if you see that you're using multiplication to figure out what you should multiply, you use the inverse operation, division. So in other words, if something times 7 is 35, then 35 divided by 7 gives you that something. And it would look like this. Remember, writing that fraction means division. So in fact, what you're doing is dividing both sides by 7. And what I should say is that in any math equation, what you're always doing, even though we might not always write it, if you're doing something to one side, like multiplying it by 7 or adding some value to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other. Okay, so the, again, the reason I'm dividing both sides by 7, and I knew to do that, is because in algebra, you always use inverse operations to help you solve. So here it was 7 times x. Well, I want to know what x is, so I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So if they say multiply, then you divide. Well, what does that do for us? Well, on this side of the equation, a 7 divided by a 7 is just 1. So we cross it out because it no longer matters. And we have x equals 35 over 7. So good. We're going good here because we want to know what x is. And now x is its just telling us x is this. 35 divided by 7 is 5. So in our first example, our value is 5. Now, if you're totally feeling lost and you can't figure out this is right, what you can do is take this value and plug it in. Plugging a value in means instead of writing x, write this number. So we have 3 times x up here. Well, x is 5, right? So 3 times 5 plus 4 times 5. Now, if we're right, we should get 35. So let's solve this. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 4 times 5 is 20. So we get 35. Now, because we got 35, and that's what it should equal, we know we're right. Let's try this equation over here. So you could guess. I mean, you could try a bunch of different values of x until you got 100. But let's try a strategy over here. First of all, just like we did before, let's combine like terms. This one's a little bit trickier. Negative 3x plus x, how do we do that? Well, first of all, remember that x, when you see it by itself, it's really 1x. So now we have negative 3x's plus 1x. Just think about what is negative 3 plus 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So this is, in fact, negative 2x. And then rewrite the whole equation, just like before. And now we have a smaller equation. <coughs> and you might see that the answer is going to be negative 50, because negative 2 times negative 50 is positive 100. But let's find out how we get there. Again, we're going to use inverse operations. Negative 2 is being multiplied by x to get 100. So that means 100 divided by negative 2 is x. And the way we can figure that out is to divide negative 2 on both sides of the equation. We are multiplying, so to get x by itself, which we did here, see how x is all alone? It makes your life very easy to read the answer. We want to divide and get rid of this negative 2. 
negative 2 divided by negative 2 is just 1, so we can cross it out, it doesn't matter. And x is 100 divided by negative 2. Well, 100 divided by negative 2 is negative 50, which is our answer. Sometimes um, we might not have all of the variables on one side of the equation. That would be spread out, some on this side, some on this side. Um, but your goal is usually to get all the variables on one side. And the reason that's your goal is because you want to combine like terms, like we did in the other two examples. But how do we do that? Again, think inverse operations. Well, you can start here and move this x to this side so we can combine it with this x, or we can move this one on this side. I'm going to choose to move this one because I don't want to move this over here and then have a zero on this side. I think it might make things more frustrating for me. So how do I get this on this side? Do you just take it and move it? Well, equations are all about balance. So how do we do that? Well, since it's subtracting 3x, well, I, I want to add 3x to this side of the equation and to this side. Why do I want to do that? Well, in order to move it from here to here, what that really means is I have to get rid of it on this side and then add that value to this side. How do you get rid of negative 3x? You write down its opposite, which is positive 3x. So if you have positive 3x plus negative 3x, you have 0. So now, in effect, we have a 0, so we've gotten rid of it. We've moved it from this side to over here. So let's rewrite everything else. Plus 10 equals, now I have negative x plus 3x on this side of the equation. Let's rewrite it one more time, because in fact, we don't need to write this 0. Zeros, especially when adding and subtracting, don't matter. So this is very similar to our problems before. Now we just have negative x plus 3x is 10. You could find values of x until you get the answer, but instead let's combine some like terms. If I have 3x's and then I have a minus, again this is minus 1x, that means you have 2x's. Again, it's just like doing 3 plus negative 1. So 2 times x is 10. Well, what's x? x is 5 because 2 times 5 is 10. But what if you had to figure that out, if it was a more complicated? Again, use inverse operations. 2 times x is 10, so 10 divided by 2 will give you the mystery number. But to do that, you really have to divide 2 by both sides. Why? Because you want to get rid of the 2 on this side, so you just have x. So x equals 10 over 2, and that's 5. How do we know if we're right? Again, plug it in. You could do it right here. Negative 3 times 5 plus 10 should equal negative 5. Does it? Absolutely. Let's check it out. Negative 3 times 5 plus 10 equals negative 15 plus 10, which is negative 5. And that's what we have here. So this side of the equation is negative 5, and so is this one. Our answer is correct. Now this equation, same idea, just a little bit longer. So look, we have two x's on this side. Let's combine them right away. Two x's plus three x's is five x's. Then rewrite the rest of the equation. So it's five x plus five equals minus five x. Same strategy as before. I want to combine the x's on one side of the equation. This time, I'm gonna move this x over here because I want you to see what it looks like when you get everything off of one side. So how do I get rid of this and move it on this side? Well, remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do it to the other. How do you get rid of a minus 5x? You add its opposite, plus 5x, and that will get rid of it. We have to do it to both sides, otherwise we throw the balance off in the equation. So this is just 0. Rewrite the rest of the equation. 5, and then, well, I think we can do this one. 5x plus 5x is 10x's carry that sign down. So now we have this equation, 10x plus 5 is 0. Well, usually, we could solve it right here. We could see the answer, to get 0, x must be negative 1 half. But, let's get there. 
So to do that, we want to have x by itself on one side of the equation. What do I mean? Look down here. x is by itself on one side of the equation. And that's useful because it tells us the answer. x is this. We want to have that over here. How do we do that? Well, we have to move the numbers from this side over here. To do that, get rid of them. 5, well, take 5 away. And then do it on both sides of the equation to keep balance. 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. And we still have this plus and 10x. So now we have 10x plus 0 is negative 5. Let's simplify that. 10x equals negative 5. We don't need a plus 0. 10x is negative 5. Well, again, we're multiplying 10 by x. So now let's divide by 10. That's useful because 10 divided by 10 is 1. And now we just have x on one side. And we can see the answer. But if we're dividing 10 on this side, we have to also do it on this side. What's negative 5 divided by 10? Well, just think of 5 divided by 10. If you have 5 things and you give it to 10 people, everyone gets 1 half. And in this case, since this is negative and that's positive, the answer is negative. So x is negative 1 half. And if you wanted to check, you could plug in the 1 half into this equation. The only other type of problem you might experience is something like this. Now, usually with PEMDAS, if you had numbers here, you would have the option to solve inside the equation and then evaluate the next step. But with algebra, there's nothing we can do in here. You can't add x plus 2 to get 2x. The reason is, if x was 1,000, we don't know what it is, then the answer would be 1,002. But if x was 100, it would be 102. So by combining 2 and x, you would just be doubling x. So x, it really matters what x is. Um, so we can't do anything here. So what do we do? We use the distributive property. Distributive prop. Now the distributive property applies to multiplication. Write that down. So this is saying 3 times all this stuff in here. That's what this is. It's a shortcut. 3 times all this stuff. So how do we do that? We multiply 3 by all the stuff. So 3 times x is 3x. Well, now we're adding. 3 times 2 is 6. Now we have this equation. A little bit simpler. What do we want to do? We want to get x by itself so we can read the answer. So let's get rid of this 6. So take 6 away. We want to do it on this side as well. So keep the balance. 6 minus 6 is 0. 15 minus 6 is 9. So we have 3x plus 0 is 9. Simplify it. We don't want to write the 0 in there. It's just cluttered. 3 times x is 9. You can see that the answer should be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. But let's divide. We want to get rid of that 3. Do it on both sides, and x equals 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Let's use the distributive property here. Same idea, but now we have a negative. So negative 3 times x is negative 3x plus, well, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and this equals 3, right? That's what I see up here. So now, all these signs, it's easy to get confused. So let's think about it. I want to get rid of negative 6. What do I do? I add 6 and do it to both sides. So negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 3 plus 6 is 9. And we haven't lost this yet, so it's negative 3x plus 0 is 9. Simplify it to negative 3x equals 9. Now we have negative 3 times something is 9. Well, that's got to be negative 3, because negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. However, let's use our inverse operations. So negative 3 times x is 9. Let's divide by negative 3. That enables us to get rid of this number. Anything divided by itself is just 1. We don't need that. And we have to do it also on this side. And there's our answer. x equals 9 divided by negative 3, which is negative 3.